The shining moment of life, that's a wedding. It's the important day when you become the star. That's why you want to make it a memorable and wonderful event. Everyone would think so. Especially for a bride, it's something you absolutely want to succeed. But what if it gets ruined? What if the groom's family is the one who ruins it? Be grateful we're taking you as our daughter-in-law, says Ben, my father-in-law. We'll teach you proper manners. Be thankful, says Emma, my mother-in-law. My parents' word is law. Obey everything, says my husband. Could you tolerate such a thing? I'm Mary, 25 years old. I work as an office clerk at a small company. I met my boyfriend, Tom, through work. Today, we went to Tom's parents' house. We're getting married, so we came for a family meeting. Tom's parents, whom I'm meeting for the first time. Standing in front of their large house, I swallowed nervously. Don't be so tense. Relax, they're my parents, says Tom. Yeah. Do I look okay? Will they accept me? Don't worry, you'll be fine. Tom lightly says and reaches for the front door. Nervously, I enter the house. We're greeted by Tom's mom. A woman with her hair neatly tied back, giving off a calm aura. Nice to meet you. I'm Mary. First impressions are crucial, so I greet her energetically. Then, hmm, so you're Tom's. Emma says just that and retreats to the back. I'm taken aback when Tom urges me to come inside. I feel like my efforts are being undermined. In the living room, a man, presumably Tom's father, is already seated on the sofa. Hello, Dad, Tom says. Nice to meet you. I'm Mary. I greet him, thinking this must be Ben. Then, behind his glasses, sharp eyes pierce through me. So, you're Tom's girlfriend. Quite plain, but sit down anyway. Again, I'm taken aback by his words. What? Plain? Sure, I dressed modestly today, but to say it to my face. The atmosphere is unpleasant from the start. Is this normal when meeting a son's fiancé? Amidst the awkwardness, I sit on the sofa as prompted. Tom sits next to me. An uncomfortable silence follows. Ben crosses his arms and closes his eyes, while Tom casually plays with his phone. After a while, Emma comes in with coffee. Thank you. I say, but Emma just looks at me without a word. Extremely awkward. Why is it so awkward? Thinking that these will be my in-laws makes me a bit reluctant. But marriage is about patience, right? It's not easy to get along with people from a completely different background all of a sudden. Anyway, I just need to be patient for now. It would be troublesome if they opposed our marriage because they disliked me. I stayed silent not wanting to stir the waters. So? Ah, we've decided to get married. Tom finally spoke up when Ben urged him. Hey. It's an important conversation, and he's casually mentioning it while fiddling with his mobile phone. That's what I thought inside, but I definitely couldn't say that in front of my future in-laws. I sighed inwardly and turned back to them. I may not be perfect, but please. Why did you choose such a plain woman? Excuse me? I was about to introduce myself when Emma cut me off. And she said something unbelievable. Plain, that's what Ben called me earlier too. Tom is very handsome, as you can see. He deserves a more beautiful woman. How could our son choose someone like you? It's a shock to me as a mother. Do you understand? I'm sorry. How am I supposed to understand that? Should I say he's not that handsome? That would probably end badly. I apologized, suppressing my swirling emotions. Feeling the injustice of why I even had to apologize. But Emma's onslaught didn't stop. First of all, Tom had better marriage proposals. The daughter of a prestigious patisserie, the young lady of a major IT company. All from beautiful families and you've ruined all those opportunities. How will you take responsibility? Responsibility? If there really were such amazing proposals, I'm sorry. 
but why do I have to apologize for that? Tom, on his part, was no help. Why isn't he supporting me? Feeling my glaring gaze, Tom hastily looked up from his mobile phone. Mom, that's enough. I chose Mary because I want her. Don't nitpick. But you. Emma, that's enough. You're making Mary uncomfortable. Still, Ben. Even when her son and husband told her, Emma still seemed to have something to say. Ben stopped her and then looked at me. By the way, what do your parents do? My dad is a salaried worker, but my mom. My mother passed away when I was young. My father, not finding anyone he loved more than her, didn't remarry and raised me by himself. When I shared this, they looked surprised. From a single parent family, I see. Oh, single parent, huh? What's with that tone? Both of them together. The stifling atmosphere didn't change, and that was the end of the day. My unease never cleared up until the end. Tom did say he had no intention of marrying anyone but Mary, but I could feel the mood of almost yielding to his parents' pressure. I'm feeling uneasy. This house, it's full of nothing but labeling, calling everything plain or criticizing for being from a single-parent family. I forgot the uneasiness I felt back then in the midst of the busy wedding preparations. There was just so much to do. Staying within the budget meant not all wishes could be fulfilled. I only had one chance for a dress change, so I spent a lot of time choosing the dress. I was satisfied with the flawless piece I selected. Negotiations with the venue, preparing the invitations, there were so many things to take care of. It was a hectic period at work too. Before I knew it, three months had passed and the wedding day arrived. After the ceremony in the church chapel, I took a moment to breathe in the waiting room, and then my father came in. Congratulations, Mary. Thank you, Dad. His eyes were red. The walk down the aisle earlier in the church, my arm linked with his. He cried all the way until we reached Tom, the groom. Dad, you're crying too much. Can't help it. My little girl is getting married. I wish your mother in heaven could see this. I'm sure she's watching from above. Yes. It must have been tough for a father to raise a daughter alone. I had my rebellious moments during adolescence. There were things easier to consult with a mother, not so easy with a father. Our relationship strained, and at times, I rebelled fiercely. But now, as an adult, I understand. My father was always there, watching over me. Clumsy, but he truly loved me and took great care of me. Dad, thank you for everything. I'm going to be happy. He cried again. Oops. The moment I smiled, he was overcome with emotion and burst into tears. Then the reception started. The bride and groom's parents sat beside them. Next to me was naturally my father alone. He managed to stop crying, but his nose was still runny. I watched the ceremony proceed with a wry smile, thinking, can't be helped. But one thing was bothering me. My in-laws. Across from Tom, my in-laws were eating and drinking voraciously. In such situations, the bride and groom are the main characters and hardly get to eat anything. You have to listen attentively to speeches from bosses and friends, and you have to smile even at dull performances. Nervous and attentive, there's no time to eat. Even my father only occasionally sipped water and hardly ate. In contrast, my in-laws just kept eating. And drinking. We had arranged for quite expensive wine, but they drank it like water. It was as if they were trying to get their money's worth. With a strained face, I decided to enjoy the reception. But the incident happened right after that. It was during the candle service when we were about to express our gratitude to our parents. First, it was my turn. Me, Tom, and my father stood up. Just as I was about to read the letter I had prepared. What's this, a letter to the parents? To a single parent? What's there to say? He probably didn't even raise you properly. It's true, there's such a thing as the air freezing in a place. I felt the room freeze. Who made that remark just now? I looked around in surprise. 
It was Ben. Ben? As if to interrupt my astonished voice, Ben raised his tone even further. Seriously? Sending us a daughter with no manners? How do you plan to support us without a decent income? Excuse me? What is he talking about? Supporting them? I might understand if it's about Tom's support. But why does my income matter? Confused, I tilted my head and Ben pointed at me and yelled. Listen. We're taking you as a daughter-in-law, so be grateful. If you have any gratitude, send us money every month. Excuse me? Shocked, I remained still and then Emma spoke up. Really? Such a plain daughter, we didn't really want her. Even the dress she chose is plain, unbearably plain. Being from a single parent family, you probably weren't raised properly. It's a good opportunity. You're becoming our daughter-in-law, so we'll teach you manners. Be thankful. Emma? Apparently, the two were completely drunk, their faces bright red. Perhaps this was their true feelings coming out. I couldn't believe my in-laws could think this way. I was just stunned. In a panic, I looked at Tom. Your parents are saying such things, but this must be a mistake, right? Support? Manners? They're just drunk, right? Verbal abuse towards his soon-to-be wife. I expected Tom to get angry, but my expectation was quickly betrayed. What? What are you talking about? My parents are saying it, so as their daughter-in-law, it's natural for you to obey, right? Excuse me? What's that supposed to mean? Don't worry, don't worry. If you follow dad and mom's instructions, nothing will go wrong. That's how someone outstanding like me was raised. Well, I did choose my marriage partner myself. Mary, you'll be fine. If you listen to my parents, everything will work out. Tom wasn't drunk. He hadn't drunk a drop. Yet, these words. What are you talking about? Support? Manners? That's ridiculous. The moment I vehemently objected. Tom's face, twisted in a way I'd never seen before, loomed in front of me. Anger filled his expression. What? You don't understand? My parents' word is absolute. As their daughter-in-law, you must obey everything. Don't you get it? This is why single parent. The moment I heard Tom's words, something inside me snapped. I felt cold. It was too much. I'd had enough. In an instant, my love for him vanished. I couldn't understand what I had ever seen in this man. I turned around, feeling completely detached. And my father, seeing my face, nodded subtly. Shall we go? He said. Yes, let's. My father and I stood up simultaneously and started walking towards the exit. Wait. Tom and his parents were stunned. Hey Mary, what's this joke? You're the one joking. Don't touch me. I reflexively brushed off Tom's hand as he tried to grab me and turned towards the attendees. I apologize to everyone who took the time to come here today. Today's reception will be cancelled here. We will make amends at a later date. I greeted everyone firmly and solemnly. What are you doing, making decisions on your own? Tom was panicking. Shut up. How can I continue after being ridiculed to this extent? I had never directed my anger at Tom before. But this time, it had exceeded my limits of patience. Mary, what are you doing? You're bringing shame upon us. I won't forgive this. I don't need your permission. Don't you understand the atmosphere here? Continuing the reception in such a frozen venue is abnormal. At my remark, Emma hurriedly looked around. Company colleagues, relatives, friends, many acquaintances. Their gazes were cold. The three of them, subjected to a mix of astonishment and anger. It seemed they finally realized their unreasonable behavior. Emma started. It was just a little joke. She said. Too late. What joke? 
How can such despicable behavior happen at such an important occasion? That's right, that's right, there's a limit to making fun of someone. Marrying into a family like yours would be pitiful for the bride. You should definitely call it off. Booze started all at once. The in-laws and Tom turned pale. Then someone stepped forward. It was my father. Indeed, Mary did go through hardships. Being raised only by me might have had its inconveniences. But I believe she turned out to be a wonderful daughter. I listened silently to my father's words. At least, she's not a daughter who should be exploited and disciplined by you. What about you, after all? What's wrong with us? Parents who exploit money from their DIL, a son who doesn't even try to protect his bride. To me, it seems like you're the ones who failed in parenting. Voices of support rose from all over the venue at my father's words. The three of them, subjected to blame, turned paler. Then I stepped forward. And I said, Tom, I will not marry you. I'm better off without a family like yours. Don't involve me in your life again. At these words, Tom finally started crying, and the family of three left the venue as if fleeing. A big round of applause erupted from the venue immediately after. The applause, marking the finale of the cancelled reception, made me smile wryly as I held my father's hand, and he returned the smile. What happened afterward? Of course, the marriage was called off. Fortunately, we hadn't registered the marriage, so there was no record of divorce. Tom, I thought he might come crying and begging, but instead, he became defiant and insisted on reconciling, but of course, I politely declined with a smile. The chaotic scene at the reception quickly spread among the company and beyond, as company colleagues were also invited. He faced judgmental glances and, amidst the discomfort, was transferred to a distant rural sales office. It was essentially a demotion. Right up until he moved away. I'm sorry. You're the only one for me. I'll wait forever. He kept sending messages. I just smiled and blocked his number. Tom's parents became pariahs among their relatives. Somehow the news of their mid-reception exit spread, and they're living quietly, almost hiding in their neighborhood. Please come and be our DIL to clear up the misunderstanding. They pleaded, but what was that all about? When they became too persistent, I warned them that I might take legal action, and they finally quieted down. Since then, the two followed Tom to the countryside. I hope they never come back. For years have passed since then. In my arms is a small life. After what happened, I thought I wouldn't marry for a while, but life is unpredictable. I met a man through work and am now living a happy married life. Mary, let me hold the baby too, says dad. David, you just held him, it's my turn now, says Nick. You get to hold him every day, I only get to occasionally, let me have a turn, dad protests. Both of you, it's time for the baby to sleep. You can hold him again later. I smile wryly at my father and husband vying for the baby. Feeling the baby stir in my arms, I think to myself. May your life be filled with happiness. Just like my father raised me happily. With love, as he loved me. I will protect you. Because I love you. So, may your life be filled with immense happiness.